Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another installment of the Bald Chef of Bergamo. Today we're going to make chapata bread, the famous slipper bread of Italy. A great, wonderful bread to have with butter, make this garlic bread, or just with a little light mortadella or salami sandwich. Very crunchy, fluffy, light as a feather, light as your slipper, chapata bread. Let's see how to do it. So, for this wonderful chapata bread recipe, we're going to have about 420 grams of warm water. To that, I'm going to add 1.5 grams of active dry yeast. It's about half a teaspoon. Going to mix it up. Nice and incorporate it into that. Break it up, let it activate, get the juices flowing, and then I'm going to add to that 450 grams of my baking flour. I'll scrub this up with my hands. The baking flour. I'm using King Arthur baking flour tonight. And this is going to be my pullish. I'm going to cover it. And I will let it sit overnight. Tomorrow morning, we'll incorporate the rest of the flour to make this wonderful dough. Check back tomorrow. So, I've added the flour. And I'm going to just kind of stir this up. Give you an idea of the consistency. And it's okay. You know, it may, it may seem like it's a bit dry. It's okay. Just kind of get it incorporated and mixed in. And let the uh, let the yeast do its work, and it will get moist. Don't worry. Tomorrow it'll be nice and bubbly and be an excellent pullish. Okay. I'm going to cover this with plastic. Put a towel over it. Keep the keep the light off of it. Let the yeast do its thing. Maybe I'll still this up just a little bit more, and we'll look at it tomorrow morning. So it is seven o'clock in the morning. You can see my poolish is coming along very nicely. A lot of fermentation risen quite well. And to this, I'm going to add two teaspoons. It's about 14 grams, maybe 13 grams of salt. I've got 120 grams of warm water and then I'm going to add slowly add 300 grams of bread flour again let me get this mixed in with the pullet and then I'm going to add the bread flour bit by bit and we'll see it start to come together it's gonna to be really sticky it's a very sticky recipe but let me get it in bit by bit and then we'll see what the next stage is Okay, so I have all my ingredients added, and as you can see, this is very gooey, sticky dough. That's the hydration amount that we're kind of looking for. Now, there are a couple things that you could do here. You could put on some, you know, neoprene lab gloves of some sort, get your hands really dirty and start slapping this around, or we could do it easy way. We can cover this wait a half hour and we'll do some individual folds and what you'll see is the uh, the gluten start to form with the fermentation and it'll become more elastic and then we will provide we will need to provide a number of folds to get the texture we're looking for and of course the lovely light as a feather slipper loaf of which Chapata is named for. Cover, cover with, I'm going to cover this with uh, my saran wrap and a towel, put it in a nice warm place, maybe in the oven, the oven's not on, and come back in 30 minutes and do some folds. Okay, so you can see it's, it's a little bit, uh, kind of risen just a bit. What we're going to do is just some folds. I'm going to take my fingers, put in a little bit of water, get them nice and moist. This will prevent the dough from sticking. And then I'm going to do a series of folds like this. Let's see, 
a little bit more water there. And we're just going to do a little, it's just helping build the gluten a bit. Not a lot of science behind it. But you want to get some folds, get this dough turning over a bit. And then I'm going to cover this again, maybe another 45 minutes. Then I'm going to show you what it looks like. It's going to start to start to get a little bit more uh, come together as a dough here. All right, cover this up, put a towel over top of it, set it aside for 45 minutes. So it's been 45 minutes, and this is coming up nicely. And we can we can we're going to do another fold, and we can do that and leave it in this big big container here, this big pan. What I like to do for my chapata is I have a nice cupcake carrier. Just give you an idea of the dimensions. I don't know. Maybe it's 14 by by 9, 14 by 11 maybe, and four and three inches tall. And I've coated it with olive oil. Get yourself plenty of olive oil, get it around the sides. I'm gonna I'm gonna get my hands covered in the olive oil and I'm gonna transfer this over to here and I'll explain why I do that um, on the subsequent folds but again if you want to keep it in here you can do that that's fine we're gonna do a fold you can do a continue to do folds in here or you can put it in here and do some folds let me get it into this container here all right so I've got a transfer in here and the reason why I wanted to show you this is you got a little more space where you can do some quick folds and get some better incorporation now you could do this on a countertop but again this is very sticky so you got to keep your hands constantly oiled up. But this technique here allows the gluten to form a little bit more as well as get the folds quickly that you want. So now I'm going to, I've done a number of folds before we started filming. I'm going to let it sit here, cover this with the lid, cover it with the towel. Mickey's running around having a great time, which is fantastic. Cover this, let it sit for an hour, and we'll do some more folds. And you're going to see this. This is going to fill up the entire you. container here. Mickey, you can help me with the next fold. Check back in an hour. So it's actually been an hour and a half. And as you can see, this is starting to fill up almost the entire container. And now I'm going to do a little... I'm going to get some olive oil on my fingers. Leftover olive oil here. And then I'm going to do some folds. You can see how nice and light this is. Good job, Mickey. Bravo, bravissimo. Mickey's done. Done with this puzzle. Great. Okay, work this around. Get a little olive oil here. Get one fold this way. Like that. I like that. All right. I'm going to cover this. Put around this olive oil here. Like that. Cover this another hour or so, and it'll be nearly ready. Maybe an hour and a half. Let's do an hour, another fold, another hour would be perfect. And you'll see this will be fill up this entire container, and we'll have some wonderful loaves of chapata bread ready to go. So it's been another hour. I'm going to do one more fold. I'm going to set it set aside for another hour maybe 45 minutes or so and then get it um, ready to get proofed so let me do another fold and I'll show you how you do the proofing okay so been another hour it's actually been an hour and a half I got my nice little dough the here the turning its bread chapata right so let's say uh -huh. got my lovely assistant helping me here I'm gonna dump this out here it's gonna fall out Nice because like he wants it to fall out. That's right. Thank you very much, Celeste. Okay, so now I'm going to make sure you get a nice floured surface. Sprinkle a little flour instead of sugar. That's right. You kind of lay like this. Kind of see You can see the bubbles form on this thing. Ooh, cool. Is okay. that a giant bubble? That's a giant bubble. I'll pop it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, one thing you're going to do is you're going to cut this into like equal equal masses here. I'm going to make thir thirds, and then we'll form it into the slipper that we want. Can you pop that bubble, Daddy? When it's time, you can pop the bubble, Celeste. Okay? Thanks, Daddy. 
Love having the commentary off 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 scope here. Don't so, pop it by accident, all right? I won't pop it by accident, okay? As you can see, this is still sticky. So you want to get a good cut here. And it doesn't need to be perfect sizes. That's fine. So I'm gonna get these cut and then I'll start to form them. On this sure pan. Maybe make sure you got plenty of flour. And we'll form these into I guess we'll have two big ones and one small one here. Don't cut the bubble. Don't cut the bubble. Serious, That's the most daddy. important thing. Don't cut the bubble. Because I need to pop it. Okay, I'm going to form these up like this. Ooh. Let's not move around strikes. the camera. Okay? Okay, why not? Let me get these form, formed a bit. Mm-hmm. And then we'll go from there. Hit the right button now. So, I've had uh, my daughter help me there. As you can see, it's great to have the long-haired lady participate in the bread-making process. She really loves it. It's great to see. So I've kind of rolled these out, kind of puffed them up a little bit, doused them with a little bit of flour. And I'm going to let them sit here for about an hour. I'll cover them with a towel. And I've got some parchment paper there. And I've kind of bubbled up a little bit of that parchment paper there so I can make certain that they can expand and not, uh, not touch. And then I will throw it in the oven. And when we get to that stage, I'll show you what to do. But these should nice, nice, uh, start to rise a little bit more. You can see these bubbles coming out here. That shows this is going to be some very soft, light as a feather, chapata bread. Check back in an hour. So these are proofed. It's been maybe an hour and a half. Probably went a little too long. It's okay. You, can, you can't go too long, I guess I should say. I got a nice little bubble form in there. I'm gonna throw it in the oven. I got the oven on. I'm gonna throw it in about 480, 475, 480 for 10 minutes. I got my pizza stone in there to help put temperature on. I'm gonna slide the uh, the parchment paper straight onto the uh, onto the pizza stone. I'm gonna use my oven mitt so I don't burn my hands. 10 minutes. I'm gonna turn them upside down another 10 minutes but at that point I'll reduce the temperature to 450 but let me put them in now 475 480 depending on your temp uh, your uh, your oven and I'm gonna put a pan of water in the bottom so the bottom rack will have a little pan of water to get a little humidity into the oven okay so it's been 10 minutes and then I'll just kind of rotate these over See, they, these came a little too close together here. Just kind of separate them a little bit. I'll let them in there for another five minutes and then I'll rotate them. But as you can see, they puffed up well. They really came out great. These are going to be great. So I'm going to, I'm going to, let, let me rotate them now. I'm going to reduce the temperature to 450, rotate them for 10 minutes, and then we'll look at them then. So here you go. I did. Yep, I, met, I put on my slippers, Mickey. And these are three loaves of the slipper bread. Le ciabatte. I put them in at 10 minutes, 500 degrees. At the, in the end, it was about 500 degrees, rotated. Just turn them on upside down. Of course, I popped the bubble by doing that, but that's all right. Another 10, 10 minutes at 475, 4, 470, I think. And then turn them back over, right side up, and finish them off for another 10 minutes, about 475. And these are great. Hear that? Listen to that. And that crust. I'm going to let them cool for an hour, and then we'll dig into them. This is what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. You too can make great Italian bread. The bald chef of Bergamo brings you... Le ciabatte. Bald Chef of Bergamo. Good eats. Hot treats. Hot treats.